Well, I think it's very difficult to actually put the finger on what what is metalcore now. I think it means like maybe about 10 different things to diff- to different yeah. people. Um but it's funny it's funny that you there's part of that I I do agree with in that there is a kind of like sameness in the auditory palette that everyone's yeah. drawing from um in terms of low tune guitars, certain grooves, yep. it's like uh, electronic elements being utilized in the same way. Um, and I, to what it reminds me of is like at the kind of peak of new metal that yeah. any band that was doing that sound was blowing up. And like, dude, and right now you're having a wave. where just, dude, I, so I live about half hour from the Anaheim house of blues and dude, and any hot new, uh, metal core band that plays over there sells it out. Under Oath just sold sure. it out. Um, August Burns Red just sold it out. Fit for a King just sold it out. Wage Wars playing there next week. That'll probably be sold out. And if you were to take, you know, a lot of those bands, like they're they're different, but it's of the same ilk, right? And it's like it's all this shit is flying high. Like, yep. and I think there's just there's a lot of quality. And to me, though, the bands that are rising above all that are the ones who are doing different things. You know, it's turnstile. Like turnstile is very much of the hardcore scene, but they're, they're not really metalcore, though. No, but it's but they're to me. I don't look at it like as metalcore. I just look at it as like heavy music because I. Well, I'm specifically talking about metalcore. The stuff yeah. you're talking about with the low tune guitars and Lincoln Park choruses and the yeah. the weedly weedly riffs. I'm just like, guys, enough. I get it. Like we've been doing this for 15 fucking but years now. Bigger, I get but, it. But it's bigger now. But what I'm saying is the incentive is. That that's that's what people want to hear right now. Yeah, you know, and so if you and and the thing is, if you have good songs and you look good and you sound good live, and a lot of these bands too, it's not like they came out last week. They've kind of yeah. it's taken them fifteen years to kind of finally get out there and, and have and have this success. And it's like it's kind of what the people want. But I do hear you. Totally. Like, like I've personally like um you know you had Matt from Event Sevenfold on on your show yeah and um, I, I I spoke to him too that's gonna, gonna come out soon but he sent me a advance of their album and it was like the most refreshing thing like between that and the new Metallica album where I'm like they don't sound like every other album they're not you know they're not tuned down it sounds like a real band it's like mm-hmm. and I'm I'm and you can do this when you listen to like a playlist of like the modern metal, or whatever. And it's, everything sounds very similar. It's all massive, yeah, very similar. Exactly. And it's, and it's really good. But for me, the things that grab me lately are stuff that really stands out. It's like sleep token is like taken off because it doesn't sound like there it's has elements of things that are modern, but they're, they're turning left when everyone else is turning right. And that's, the I, I, I wanted to ask you specifically about sleep token because, um, you know, anytime other people like something and I don't get it, I I want to figure out what they're seeing and hearing and responding to that I don't get. And with Sleep Token, I, I don't really get it, but I would like to. Oh, so you tell you, me there. what tell yeah. me, explain it to me. Uh they have a pop singer in the band that would be huge even if he was just a pop singer. Like, I just wish they played songs that were more pop. They do have pop, like they have songs on the record that are just pop. So it's like, uh, so if you listen to uh, their previous record, uh, it's really good, but it's not like this is changing the game. And then when they they put out uh, that new song, I forget the name of it, um, the TikTok one. I, I guess I don't know TikTok, but whatever. Yeah, the what's first, the funky part in it? Yeah, whatever the first song was yeah. that they released that's coming out on their new album, it was like, oh, this is a game changer to me. It reminded me when Opeth came out. Where you're like, oh, you can do this in metal, and that doesn't happen very often. It happens every no, it five, six years where a band comes out, right. and it's like they do everything well. They're progressed. They're like it's basically like if you had a gent version of Tool, who mm-hmm. also can do these like jazzy R and B parts. But but I'm telling you, and then they then you take all that, and then they have this fucking image, and this concept, yeah. and that always takes like you know, something from a marketing standpoint from like a two to a 10. And sure. so to me, and then like, I, if they look like me, they wouldn't be half as popular. Well, you don't know what they look like. Cause they got these talking masks. I mean, they might, I mean, if they went on stage like you. looking like this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, and it's always, it's always mattered. Right. Like, you know, and to me, they, they're like, 
I think they're going to be the next ghost in terms of the size and their impact. And I just think the songs, man, I think the songs are fucking undeniable. There's such a high level. And it's like, dude, some bands just hit that, hit that moment. I think I'm very good at recognizing this where I'm like, Oh, that's it. They hit the, they, they found the thing. And it's like, and dude, and sometimes it only takes you only, you, you don't have to make one all time classic record. Yeah. You're it. It might, you're might, made it, forever. Yeah, it's like Guns N' Roses made uh, Appetite for Destruction, and that's it. Every album probably could have sucked. It wouldn't matter. Yep. Because it's like you did it. You you hit the final level. Um. And so so yeah. But but I think the key is ultimately like o- outside of all the proggy stuff they do, they have a singer that is instantly recognizable and is and is a good enough singer. Yeah, that, he's very good. He he could be a solo artist and be a uh, successful in the pop world all on his own. And I think that just people like that are just rare. There's just not yeah. many of those. And to have one in metal is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, very rare. Like Noah from Bad Omens is another one of those yeah, people. I think. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, like um, and it just they're they're just very few and far between. And so you take that with this prog thing, and they do it so well. Like they're musically very very high level. Um, but not in a way that only musicians can understand it. Yeah. Regular, and tools that way too, right? It's very musically complex, but normal people can can comprehend it. Uh, high level songwriting and then this image thing. And there's like a whole like concept and story behind it. All the lore. Yeah. yeah like, and that dude, that people eat that up. And I'm just like, I, I just posted, they sold their entire tour out. And I go, they're playing, they're playing like theaters and they should probably be in like, you know, three, 4,000 cap rooms at this point. But yeah, I mean, if they're selling theaters out in a day. But that's the smart move, though. You sell it out, you build the demand, and you let you know you let you know let people go crazy and sell you know try and get tickets on StubHub and make it a a a, a kind of a fever kind of thing. And uh, but yeah, man, I, I'm dude. I just get excited, man, when there's when new bands come out and take off. It's like it helps the whole scene. And people always a few years ago, everyone's like, "Who's gonna be the headliners?" And now you see them one by one. These bands just keep you know they're 